back, guys, with Young Gung talking about these matches. They've been pretty sick so far. And uh, it's 2-0 right now for Jin Air over Samsung. Kind of the result I was not expecting. Yeah, we were expecting an even series here, one to one. Either way, uh, if Deer or Reality were taking the games out. But we see here Jin Air with an available lead right now. And coming to this game, SOS against Journey, you have to give the advantage to SOS. Yeah, definitely giving the advantage to SOS, but outside of that, if Journey does win, I feel like this is 100% going to an ace match. I mean, Solar's one of the best Zerg players in the world right now. He's going up against Rogue, who's in a massive slump. So I feel like if Journey could pull something off against, again, one of the trickiest and uh, smartest for us players that we do have out here, it's going to be hard, but if he could do it, then I feel like Samsung is not in a terrible posi uh, position here. That is true that Rogue is in a slump. He did perform very poorly in his Code S group, but he did kind of redeem himself by taking a win against Viol on Prion Terraces in the Pro League. So he's got that CVZ win behind his uh, back, and it, it seems like he could build on that confidence of taking that game out and maybe move on, uh, build on that confidence in the game against Solar if we get there, of course. Yeah, uh, definitely would be like a confidence booster for sure. I, I still would favor Solar even so, just based on you know what he's done so far. But let's take a look at the predictions here. Two people actually going for Journey. It's gonna be Dehan and Chaster, but the rest of us going for SOS. Let's go into this matchup right now on Dust Tower. Down in the bottom left, in the green from the Genera Green Wings, it's SOS. And up in the top right, in the blue, the Terran player from Samsung, it is Journey. Did you know that SOS's old ID was shy? Was it really? Yeah. Shy? During the uh, Brood War days, his uh, old ID was shy. Well, what do you think is better, SOS or shy? SOS by probably nine million <laughs> points. The disaster Terran journey. That's, a, the that's disaster an amazing, in. amazing Photoshop there. <laughs> oh man. That's pretty cool. I like that. Oh, that Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> if only I could Photoshop as good as that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, we see an early Nexus here from SOS. Uh, no surprises given the map dust towers. It's so easy to take your expansion. And uh, I was going to say reality there. Journey, actually getting that quick wall off off. He doesn't want any SOS shenanigans with that probe, trying to deny that uh, back expansion as we uh, we always seldom oh. see from SOS. Journey having a bit of trouble there with the SCV, delaying it slightly. I feel like uh, the probe, though, it does serve two purposes. One, to harass here at the front, but also to make sure he's not dying anything uh, to, to anything here super quick. Any kind of really cheese builds. Uh, yeah, put the Nexus first <laughs> behind this. It could have been possible that if he didn't build that Supply Depot, he could have put down a pile in there, and we could have seen another Hero Dream situation. But uh, Journey is privy to that fact that we could see some crazy pile on plays here from SOS. I mean, SOS is one of the more creative players out there in the StarCraft world, so this uh, Marine's going to chase away that pile on... Oh, that, not pile on, that probe. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be amazed if pylons could walk. The mini-moving yep. pylon, that's the probe. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, if that probe was kept alive, then... Who knows what that probe could have done Yeah, the journey. That's like the number one rule when you're facing Protoss in any expansion. It's like, kill the probe that's out on the map, and you'll feel a lot safer because pylons are so pesky, proxies. It's They can put down you know pylons at the front now for that kind of aggression you were talking about. We did see out of Hero. It's just you need to kill that probe at all costs. I mean, don't, don't lose your base for it, but... It's definitely a good thing to do, make you feel pretty comfortable. Uh, note that uh, Journey is actually going for another barracks behind this rather than going for that quicker factory. So maybe he wants to get the tech lab out on that barracks and uh, get that steam upgrade early. We've seen this uh, done by a few players, notably Dream. And uh, we'll see if he gets another command center behind this as well or he powers off these two bases. 
Yeah, we'll have to wait and see, but we do have a Stargate coming up here about halfway done for SOS. It's been kind of the tech of choice these days in the matchup. I, I've been liking the way it goes, regardless of if you're on Elrena or not. It's just pretty strong in general. You can put out that uh, harassment damage with the Oracle, keep it alive, and even go into Phoenixes if you feel like it's necessary. Yeah, the only main issue what, with going with Stargate tech is that you only have that Oracle for detection, and if we see Cloak Banshees or Widowmine play from the Terran, then it might be harder than usual to defend from any attacks that the Terran might do. But luckily for SOS, we do see Stimpaks and not even uh, the Star uh, Starport rather finish the journey yet. So you should feel pretty safe right now. Oh, oh. one more hit. Oh, there it goes. Not going to get the Scout, in fact. That's yeah. a really nice deny. Just good placement by SOS. He only sees the gas, but of course the Protoss is going to have that gas by this time. Yeah, and he's going to take a third base behind this, and I'm pretty sure SOS is pretty confident that at this point of the game he's not going to die to any crazy timing push or anything like that that Journey decides to do, it, uh, could have done, yeah. rather. So, And this Oracle is going to confirm everything that he thinks that's happening right now. Yeah, I love what you're saying about that third base. It's just like the second you know you're not going to die to anything, on a map this big, it really does benefit to you to just drop that down. I mean, unless the Terran's coming across with the massive, like, stim timing. He is going to have a lot of Marines here with stim, but uh, it, is, it looks like it's going to be a double drop, though. It's, it's not going to be, like, this massive two base all in here. So, you know, third base, if he can secure this and defend it here, definitely going to benefit SOS. But uh, we do see those two drops making their way across the map now. Yeah, and we also see SOS actually opting to go for another Oracle rather than uh, the Phoenix play that we sometimes see from Protoss players in this matchup. So, oh, it doesn't actually get to see this uh, drop coming by, so this could do a lot of damage if SOS is not prepared for it. Yep, sneaking on by, that stim pack is going to finish up right when these units do drop out. And There's, huh? a, there's a Stasis Ward down there at the bottom of the ramp, but that's not going to be really useful for this drop that's coming in right now. Yeah, it looks like the drop may want to come into the back door base. There are a couple of nicely placed pylons, and the Mothership Corps is in position to scout this. But he does have to get over there and put down the overcharges, and he does. So let's see if he can defend this. I mean, that's a couple of pylons here, and the Adepts are coming over now. Oh, if he snipes this pylon, yes, he does. Okay, he gets a pylon, but no probe kills at all. So not really a good win there from Journey. A uh, pylon, sure, it's a nice uh, building to kill, but yeah, I think I think he lost way too many Marines there. And he's not really finding any damage off of the back of this. Sure, he's trying to drop out here, but now getting tagged by the Oracle. And we have actually seen a Void Ray here. We've seen a lot of these Protosses go for that one Void Ray to uh, help deflect any weird uh, unit movements. So we'll see if this Void Ray goes for this Liberator or not. Yeah, definitely going to come over here for the defense. He does have to pull those probes out of the way. Uh, the, the cannon would have been nice against a drop, but not against a Liberator, obviously, unless the Terran parks it right over the the uh, cannon, which, of course, he won't. You do have another uh, Medivac making its way across the map with two Widow Mines. Yeah, but we'd have that cannon in the mineral line of the main base. I'm not sure if SOS has a cannon there at the third base. I'm pretty sure he would, uh, considering that he has seen all these drops happening at an early stage of game from Journey. Yep. SOS at the same time swinging by, revealing the whole front of the base of the Terran. Just going to grab a bunch of the units there. We do have this drop coming in quick towards that backdoor base, but we do have the Mothership Core in position. Will it be a quick response out of SOS? Let's see these Widow Mines being dropped. Pylon overcharge targeting the Widow Mine. Actually takes out the Widow Mine. Nice play there from uh, SOS. And, uh, yeah, and the other one only gets one kill, so... Really not finding the damage that Journey wanted with the drop. And now SOS sitting back on three bases. He's got Storm on the way. He doesn't have all that many units, but he's just got a massive economy. He's so far ahead of Journey here. And wow, Ooh, at the same time, he's going to take this in base. base. Yeah. What do you think about this? I mean, it's a, it's a gigantic map. The fourth base can be kind of harder to take on this map for the Protoss, so he just hides it instead. Yeah. Uh, if... Obviously, if Journey doesn't like scout this, then it's going to be a huge win for SOS if he keeps that base alive. But we see here Journey going for Ghosts pretty early, considering the fact that he did scout those early storms. So we're going to see a pretty crazy army movement game between both players with those Ghosts and those Templars. 
Yeah, and at the same time, it looks like a bit of a tech switch here from SOS into an extra Stargate and a Fleet Beacon and plus one air weapon. So definitely going to be committing to a lot of air units. What do you think is going to be here, Tempest? Yeah, I think it's Tempest. You've got to consider the architecture of the map. And we've seen a lot of these drawn out, excuse me, uh, drawn out Protoss versus Terrans in the past. Uh, one game from memory, which was really crazy, was uh, Mario versus Zest from the GSL Code A, mm. where it basically was just a split map situation and using those Tempest to outrange your oh. opponent as uh, this Marine will it scout oh. this expansion. He turns the Oracle around. Oh, There's the Adept though. But surely he has to know something is going on if oh, that Adept yeah. is randomly there. Look at and this. here you see him, he's, he's moving towards that expansion. So it looks like SOS might be able to defend this expansion. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to defend it here. Medivac comes in and scouts it. And immediately SOS drops down another third base. He's like, okay, I lost that one. There you go, you can have it. So hidden base does not pay off this time for SOS. Journey, really nice uh, studying on SOS because SOS loves to do this kind of play. Yeah, I mean, he does take this fourth base behind uh, losing that his hidden fourth base, but we see Tempest Art coming out for SOS, but I'm not really sure if Tempest is the right choice considering the fact that Journey did rush for these ghosts. I mean, the ghosts are only there to snipe those Templar, but there might be, I think there might be a different, uh, I'm not really sure what to say, to be honest, like, I don't know what you think about the Tempest. Uh, I, I like them only because they've gone unscouted for so long. They, there's no Viking production. I, I think there's only one starport on the map right now, so it's going to be very hard to start producing stuff that will counter the Tempest. The question is, will there be enough Tempest to defend this fourth base from this massive push? Okay, well, okay, so the Liberators are out for Journey, and those Tempest will just wreck havoc on those Liberators. He has to move back here, unless he tries to snipe these Tempest. No. Oh, he's, yeah, he's actually going for the move. Yeah, he going to, the Storms are out, though, for SOS, and that's going to defend this army. Oh. Yeah, I think we had an ACMP go down as well onto a bunch of those High Templar, yeah. Actually, no, it was just mainly onto the Adepts, so not so bad so far. Uh, Liberator decides to walk in to his death. Maybe a bad rally there. Yeah, but these ghosts are going to be doing a nice job just camping whenever SOS overextends here. As right now, Journey's just trying to get the best positioning here with these Liberators, but these Tempest doing a lot of damage so far. No Oracles left on the map, so he really can't spot for these Tempests. But you can see that Real or rather Journey is still having trouble attacking into this nice storm going down on to half of that army. And now with six, seven Tempests out here, he's shelling this entire Terran army on the ground. And as I said before, Journey really doesn't have an, an, a response to this. Only now is he putting up two extra starports. Yeah, but Journey is doing the correct course of action here, adding those extra starports, getting those Vikings out to deal with those Tempests as... Uh, we see some Adept Rats here from SOS, not really amounting too much, just uh, used more as a scout as Journey's taking his own fourth base, and uh, we might be seeing a very long drawn out game here. Yeah, now uh, having SOS go into his own fifth base behind this as well. Uh, definitely preparing for the long game here. Still not much of a response or answer for these Tempests. I mean, he is getting those starports, as you mentioned before, but only four Vikings out on the map. He's going up against 10 Tempests by this point, so. <laughs> I mean, 10 Tempests are a lot of Tempests, and uh, you get to that point where there's just uh, too many Tempests that they just one-shot every unit that you have, but oh, nice Adept Shade here from the SOS. Does uh, a lot of SUV damage, actually, to Journey. Nine SUVs killed, but looks like we're gonna see a counter drop here from Journey. Yeah, look at that one Void Ray, too. From the beginning of the game, Oh, Not it's carriers. What? Really? <laughs> is this happening again? Okay. Well, this is going. You guys are turning, tuning in for a treat. He's made ten tempests, and he's like, "Okay, that's enough. Two carriers now. That's what I want." Look at this drop. I mean, there's one full energy high templar, oh. a couple of cannons, and the void ray in position to block. Oh, what? This. Oh, I thought that uh, Mer uh, medivac was going to die there, but that is a lot of tempests, and. Uh, <laughs> If Journey gives SOS too much time here, he might just have way too large of an air <laughs> army to just win the game. I mean, do you, do you ever play BGH and you just sat on like two bases with uh, your like the max minerals and you just maxed out on carriers and there was nothing your opponent could do about it? This feels like what's happening, what I'm seeing right now. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like it is going to get to that spot where, okay, you got Tem Tempest, two Void Rays, and he's making four carriers at a time. Like, I, I'd love to see what this Bio Army is going to be able to do against that and Storms, which, don't forget, he still has ten High Templar. Ten! Okay? And those Storms are essential for uh, dwindling the army count of Journey because the yeah. Storms do a lot of damage to bio units. I love, by the way, what SOS is doing, shading in his Adepts for Vision for his Tempest. You don't have that Observer that, you know, can be scanned and killed. You don't have to get an Oracle out there. You can just use the Shades. Those are free. Oh, but this War Prism, though, gets uh, get inter intercepted by these Vikings, and that War Prism goes bye-bye, drops into the uh, lower grounds of the Dust Towers. as a mm. The or Abyss. The Abyss. Uh, it's like Blade Runner. <laughs> As uh, we see here, the depths of Journey, uh, not of Journey, of SOS, <laughs> uh, is actually going to kill these SMEs of Journey. And uh, Journey has to move back with his bulk of his army and uh, get yeah. rid of these adepts. That's really cute. Just a small adept army this late in the game. I mean, it's 14 minutes right now. Uh, coming in here, just doing a bit of harass, denying that fifth base for a long time here. It's going to take a while for this to clean up. This taking so much pressure off of SOS while he's making another base. And again, just more and more air units, more carriers here. Yeah, there's no loss for him losing these depths. There's no real need for them in his uh, army composition. Because you see how many air units SOS yeah. has right now. And he can just keep dumping minerals into cannons. And then the rest of his gas he can invest into more carriers. And then all the extra gas that he has, more Templars. But oh, nice Widow Mine hit there. But yeah. The bulk, those those air units are so bulky that those widow mines just nip away at those yeah. air units. They don't do splash damage. Did actually only ten health damage, but a nice spotter at least. You see, still the adept shades being used here to scout out this army. Keep in mind, as I said before, ten high templar. A lot of those Vikings could bunch up here, but let's see how Journey wants to take this all. Huge storms on the bio on the ground. Yeah, and he's still got more high templar somewhere, but. If he gets those High Templar out, storms those Vikings, then it might be bad news for Journey, but it looks like Journey wants to push in through. He kills all these cannons. Oh, where are the High Templar? Yeah, where are the he High Templar? needs them for the storms. They are coming up now. Might be too little too late, though. He loses that expansion there. This is the expansion. going to immediately put it down once again. But now it looks like not too many ghosts out on the map for Journey. He's got two right now, but that's not enough to EMP this many High Templars, so he has to back off. He can't... Uh, can't be in danger of having all of his Vikings and Bio stormed right now. Yeah, it looks like at this point he just wants to get those Vikings out, invest all that gas that he's mining right now into those Vikings so he can counteract this air army of SOS. As we see here, another air upgrade on SOS. And once those air units get to 3 3, they can pretty much kill anything quite yeah. quickly. He's also getting the shield upgrade, by the way, just a cheeky little extra upgrade he can add into this. That's a pretty drop over there. He's going to scan line. over here. Let's well, see if he can actually snipe his next assault. Yeah, there's no defense over here. I mean, SOS right now trying to remake this other base over here. <laughs> I and, love how uh, he uses the probes to take the final touch on these uh, Marines. So, yeah, at this point, though, we see the resource counter. We see SOS with a large bank of gas. So, obviously, he wants to dump that gas into getting those high templars out. The question is whether he wants to keep those High Templars for those Storms, or whether he wants to morph him into an Archon and make some sort of Mega Death Ball. Yeah, uh, we were trying to get rid of the Death Ball in Legacy of the Void, but in some senses, when you go for this kind of composition, it's somewhat unavoidable. And uh, we can see that the answer is two more carriers and uh, sacrificing some of those Adepts to add in a bunch more of the High Templar for a couple more Archons. And we see some Libre is actually coming out here for journey i think he wants i'm not sure if he wants to use those liberators for its anti-air capabilities or whether he just wants to use them for harassment purposes we'll just have to see I how mean, it goes that's a really interesting idea because it's very hard to stack your air units as a protoss obviously and they're really the liberators are only going to be good against a massive stack which is why they're really good against mutas but not so much against you know other air units that don't necessarily stack but maybe if you can get like a just a, a massive amount of them, like 14, 15, and somehow the Tempest stack. I mean, that could be an interesting idea, but I'm not sure. I, I, I'd like to see more Vikings, actually, just try to kite the carriers, you know, kite the Tempest. Two Dark Shrines. 
interesting play there wow. from SOS. Only SOS would go for two Dark Shrines. <laughs> he's like, well, if I lose match. one, you know, if I lose one, I've got enough gas, yeah, so I, mean, I might as well have two, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> Very I mean, it, it, it's, it's SOS, I mean, that's a bit some thought behind it. <laughs> he's like, I, I really like DTs. I need to give them two houses. <laughs> so they can be very comfortable. They, they need uh, more ways of getting their weapons out from those dark shrines. <laughs> yeah. And, and as we see here, like the the problem with this army of SOS, it, it just lacks mobility. I mean, carriers, tempests, they just move around the map so slowly. And a map as large as Dust Towers, it's really hard for him to position his army in the yeah, best look, way. Look at this. I mean, this entire army is coming right on down to the main base. And look at where SOS's army is. I could see his face, actually, once he saw that. He was freaking out. And it looks like Journey may make a... Yeah, he's going to make a move into the back door here. He's got massive amount of Tempest now. And he's going to drop all this by on the back. And this, this air army of SOS is so slow, just as you were saying. Yeah, I'm not really sure why he's uh, deploying those Liberate... Okay, yeah, he moves those Liberates back because... I don't really think those Libres are needed for these Archons. Uh, okay, he just moves back here because he sniped some buildings, but I don't think they were important. I think that was like cannons and pylons, so... Mm. As we see here, more command centers for those mules, obviously, from Journey, and uh, I think we're going to be down here for a long time. I mean... Yeah, this is pretty nice. Yeah, I mean, we're nearly approaching the 20-minute mark, and looks like we're just going to see split map situation, and I really love split map situations because it just it makes you i think it's the situation where you have to think the most yeah uh you have to think about so many different things like taking your bases mining out your bases what's the perfect composition hold that thought it looks like sos wants to go for the fight here he's had enough oh but these archons though doing a lot of splash damage and journey's really lazy with these units they're not focused firing on those carriers or tempest but we see counter attack here yeah. from journey we'll see how much damage this can do he wasn't paying attention. He was trying to go for that drop, and for about five to ten seconds, those Vikings were attacking interceptors. But as we were saying, the SOS is maxed out. He can't actually warp in anything to defend his main base, so he's just going to go for the attack. But we see here, Journey barely has any minerals. I mean, he's down 40 supply, and SOS is maxed, and he's got that bank as well. So Journey's <laughs> Journey is stuck. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's desperately trying to run away, but even just the four Archons getting in the back here. I mean, these Archons are doing so much damage with that splash attack. And, uh, yeah, now the, now the Carrier's getting on top. Look at how much damage those Vikings are taking. Even some uh, High Templar getting in the back here. One of the Storms going off pretty decently. You can, you can see how low all the air units of Journey are right now. But SOS has to move back here. He loses all his Interceptors and he has to rebuild him. So only the Tempest will be doing damage for this composition as he actually uh, decides to take that top left base here, and I think that move there from SOS might have given him the advantage here. Yeah, it definitely did. He's taken out a huge chunk of the air army, he hasn't lost much himself, and it seems like Journey just does not have the answer right now as these two bases get immediately burst down. Well, the problem for Journey here is that he just doesn't have the mineral bank to rebuild, and look at him, he's only rebuilding Marines and he's re rebuilding Vikings, and... I think this is just too much of a death ball here from SOS for Journey to do anything about yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, you were talking about the bank of SOS, but we failed to mention the lack of bank for Journey. Even though he was taking a million bases, he never got them off the ground. And you can see him in the booth there, not very happy about this. As, as you said, he just doesn't have the ability to build an army that could have any chance against what SOS has. Yeah, I mean, he's only got that base mining at 12 o'clock position with mules, but... As we mentioned before, the bet, there was a lack of bank from Journey because he decided to dump that minerals onto Orbital Commands. And I think SOS saw the fact that, hey, my opponent is actually building a lot of Orbital Commands here. Maybe he can't rebuild because he spent so much minerals on that. And then he just moved in and, uh, yeah. It's going to be really hard for Journey to win this game in this situation. Yeah, some decent storms coming down here. You can see the supplies right now. Not much of an army and the Archons are getting underneath everything and the storms on all the units that's gonna be the game the entire army of journey just decimated in the span of three seconds gg Jin Air and sos are going to win it off the back of a 20 minute crazy air game there from sos and it just shows if you don't pay attention to those archons they can lose you the game and those Archons did so much splash damage to the air army of Journey that 
man, like, I think Journey could have played it out longer, but it's just that poor positioning with his army, allowing his army to get splash attacked by those Archons, allow for the air army of SOS to just roll over. Yeah, and I mean, even by that point, he was very far behind, but he, he gave it his all. He tried to take that last fight. Either way, that is going to be a 3-0 for uh, the generic Green Wings. And, uh, That's really important in terms of the uh, playoff qualification oh, yeah. for round one because taking that win, I think that will vault them uh, at least even with Samsung. And the only threat right now for these three teams is a Freak of Freaks. So yeah. obviously one and two, SK Telecom and KT Rolsa, but there is a huge battle between Gen Air, Samsung and Afrika for that third and fourth place. Yeah. Um. I think Jenner and Samsung are doing the best in terms of trying to get there, but this is definitely going to hurt Samsung. As you were saying, it's going to help Jenner a lot, but definitely going to hurt Samsung. You can see Maru, Cure, and SOS taking out Deer, Reality, and Journey. A clean sweep. They made it look pretty easy, too. Well, Maru's game was a very, very scrappy one. I did go back and watch that one between him and Deer. But let's take a look at the standings here. Yeah, so we see here Jenner vaulting ahead of Samsung Galaxy. And uh, Samsung have played their six games for this round. They are at 3-3. And uh, I think the big question is, will Afrika make it to the top four, make it to the playoffs? Yeah, I guess they got a win here in a 3-0, actually, to come ahead of Samsung Galaxy Con. And I would expect that that's their only chance, yeah, unless Jin Air somehow gets 0-3 in their spot. But let's take a look at the winner's ranking here. Innovation moves up to the top. He's now 5-0. and He hasn't lost a single game so much for not transitioning well into Heart of the Swarm. It does not show in Pro League. Yeah, he did say in his interview, because he's been knocked out of all the individual leagues this season, he wants to put his complete attention in Pro League. And it obviously shows here he is undefeated so far in Pro League. Yeah, there you have it. I mean, Sue and Maru down there at 4-0. We do have Deer, Zest, and TY tied for that most winning spot, but they played two extra games on Innovation, Sue, and Maru, obviously. So, 